so far uh, we have been uh, dealing with the team natural resource management and in the last two lectures we have sort of deliberate on uh, natural resource management and, and, and uh, to what extent the community based natural resource management are being you know located and also uh, engage with the debates of the common property versus private property. So, uh, today in this lecture, uh, we are going to look at the way in which how uh, livelihoods forests and conservations are being uh, interlinked or in other words, uh, we are going to look at the way in which how uh, natural resource managed have been you know uh, used by uh, more importantly the rural or tribal communities and uh, we could also you know uh, engage upon trying to look at the with specific context to the uh, northeastern part of uh, India. So, to begin with uh, let us try to see to what extent how uh, rural households in some way tends to you know generate some kind of environmental incomes in terms of generating cash or maybe uh, with, with respects to you know the subsistence based uh, contributions from non-agricultural activities such as the uh, natural forests more importantly the uh, wild forests uh, rivers and other you know areas so uh, mostly uh, these rural communities who have been you know uh, pretty much uh, living closely or closely interacting with the uh, natural resources have uh, in, in some way have generated an income and, and which of course is uh, again uh, sourced from the uh, environment that is uh, a subsidy from nature. Uh, which, which, which I call subsidy of nature with, with, with low management intensities. But uh, over here the plantation forestry is actually being uh, uh, excluded from the natural forest. And uh, again forests and wildlands are uh, particularly important as uh, a source of sustenance for these rural dwellers and, and, and for avoiding falling into you know maybe as a sense of you know uh, poverty elevations. So, one can actually look into the interface of how this uh, rural livelihood improvement and uh, conservations of uh, natural forests in some sense intersect or, or, or the interface of between the two. And we also can you know sort of like try to look into the questions of how and to what extent the use of these uh, forest resources can in some sense elevate people from you know the state of poverty or poverty elevations. So, therefore, there tends to be some kind of uh, a reciprocal relationship between uh, the rapid transformations of rural livelihood and uh, the character in terms of quantity and quality of the uh, forested landscape. So, the very practice of this extraction of uh, environmental resource can uh, over a period of time degrade or the resources normally is being depleted and uh, perhaps this could be because uh, there, there is often uh, a trade off uh, between the current and future uh, extracted extractive incomes and, and, and rural households uh, asset buildings. So, there are studies being carried out by you know scholars who are you know uh, working on the issue of uh, forest and livelihood vis a vis conservations and, and, and which of course tries to look at the way in which how these uh, rural communities uh, engage with uh, different kinds of strategies in order to you know uh, make sense of the environment they are you know exposed to. So, we can also you know look at the way in which how uh, the degradations of these resources can create or can pose a threat 
or maybe uh, negative you know externalities for uh, those communities uh, at a larger level or or broadly so even in the you know the cases of you know low extractive incomes could actually go hand in hand with the uh, uh, disproportionate damage to threatened habitat and uh, species so if uh, natural uh, forest and other environmental resources from wildlands are you know uh, being so significant and so important to these rural households uh, in their you know everyday uh, livelihood and then and which are even more essentials uh, at, at, at times of you know their uh, shortfalls of their income uh, owing to you know external calamities uh, by you know unseen uh, seasonal chains droughts or maybe so and so forth have in some sense uh, at this at this very critical juncture these resources has you know uh, been providing a sort of a hidden harvest or maybe a sort of you know a sense of food security to these people but uh, the question remains that uh, to what extent uh, all this discourse have actually you know attracted or drew the attentions of uh, the development uh, practitioners so further we can sort of like familiarize ourselves with a few uh, concepts and uh, pertaining to the you know theme which we are uh, dealing with uh, first is uh, what what is livelihood livelihood uh, according to the, uh, a list comprises of the assets that is uh, which 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 comprises of you know like uh, the natural physical human financial and uh, social capital and also the activities and the access to these uh, which which of course are you know often being mediated by uh, institutional and uh, social relations which these people are you know being uh, situated of course uh, these two that is the assets activities and access to these in some sense uh, determined the living gained by the individual or household so uh, the second one uh, forest conservation is nothing but the engagement in a successful protection that is the improvement or creation of a specific forest and or specific you know forest functions and uh, services so forest conservation in a sense can be motivated to you know protect improve or uh, create functions and services that uh, benefit people uh, living in a given uh, geographical space or forest or or people living you know far away from forest so we could actually see uh, people who are you know directly and indirectly dependent on forest or 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 to some extent uh, it it might presuppose the uh, right to you know survival you know, being treated or or treated of life forms and habitats and and not presumed human benefit uh, at all so in the uh, continuation to this we can also in some sense familiarize ourselves with you know uh, what uh, poverty is because uh, many of these rural households who are you know uh, closely uh, dependent on these uh, forest resources are actually you know broadly categorized as backward and then they have often been uh, in the state of poverty so poverty can be in some sense uh, defined as uh, a pronounced deprivations of uh, well-being related to the lack of uh, material income or consumption low levels of education and health uh, vulnerability and uh, exposure to risk uh, lack of opportunity to be hurt and powerlessness so this could be you know uh, the definitions which are given by uh, world bank which dates back to 2001 so we have uh, in some sense you know the forest based poverty elev elev elevation that is the use of forest resources 
uh, for the purpose of you know uh, lessening deprivations of well-being on either a temporary or a lasting basis. So many of these uh, you know some of these uh, forest dwellers are, are uh, often you know the traditional or indigenous peoples uh, whose dependence on forest is uh, deeply rooted in history and long predates uh, modern social genes. So their conditions of poverty is often uh, primordial and therefore not necessarily an outcome of uh, contact with modern economies as may be the case for other uh, forest dwellers. So others are you know usually uh, ruled in, in migrants who colonize the forest frontier as a source of new agricultural lands and other economic uh, opportunities, uh, though often they are not the poorest of the poor. So forest has long been the refuge for uh, the relatively powerless and uh, poor rural you know, uh, people uh, who have you know, migrated uh, for various other regions. So uh, the survival of, uh, you know, these rural households actually depends upon to what extent their you know access to crucial resources and also the uh, utilization of these resources both of which are you know deeply embedded in the local social and institutional structures so it is not just about in the family uh, you know uh, being dependent but there are also you know different uh, parameters and factors which are actually influencing their uh, access and uh, dependent on these resources. So given the kind of context of uh, livelihood improvement, uh, forest conservation is uh, again conflictual because uh, the interests of these uh, communities or, or the stakeholders are uh, frequently at cross purposes. So therefore the question uh, time and again uh, which, which arises is that can the forest be used effectively to generate uh, income and employment that will uh, sort of liberate or make the community concerned uh, better off from their you know situations. Now if you look at the you know socio-economic development, uh, livelihoods and forests, the interlinkages or more importantly how you know the shift or the evolutions of society is concerned. Now given that uh, for instance in, in, in hunting and uh, gathering society, the characteristic uh, main type of forest use is normally uh, for you know sourcing of food that is uh, to engage in capturing and uh, collection of forest uh, both fauna and flora. So more or less it is a very subsistence based uh, kind of practices or mode of production. So they have more or less engaged with you know the forest resources in order to satisfy their basic needs and, and, and with that uh, people have you know sort of engaged or shift towards the practice of Sweden cultivations or uh, Jhum cultivation or popularly known as uh, sifting cultivations. Then the forest lands in some way happen to serve as a sources of uh, agricultural lands and uh, whose fertility is maintained and restored by the forest ecosystems in a system of uh, rotational flow. So I will elaborate more on the uh, modes of you know shifting cultivations, the knowledge systems and uh, uh, various other you know uh, elements which, which has to do with the, uh, this mode of agriculture practices in the later part of the course and uh, uh, we will also engage with trying to you know uh, look into few case studies. Now moving on from you know uh, uh, the Jhum or Sweden cultivations, people also have you know engaged with the sedentary kind of uh, 
uh, agriculture practices which is known as uh, wet rice or permanent agriculture uh, at the forest frontier and, and, and forest lands tends to you know serve as a source of new uh, agriculture lands that are not part of the forest uh, fallow system. Now, if you look at the social and political uh, characteristics of the this this commu community or the forest dependent people, uh, who are these forest dependent people? The forest dependent people are those uh, communities who live in or near forest, uh, and 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 they are you know. Uh, uh, politically weak or powerless or maybe they have you know uh, a very unstable kind of uh, uh, leadership so to say. So there is uh, uh, a history of competition, a constant you know uh, tribal warfare which you might be you know aware of uh, in, in, in the distant past. So there have been uh, you know uh, a constant uh, competition with, with, with more powerful outsiders to control or access or gain access to these forest resources which they have uh, depended on. And uh, yet again this forest de dependent people who live in or near forests uh, are actually the ones who have uh, long been you know dependent uh, for generations and to some extent sustainably you know. Uh, exploiting or uh, using uh, resources for uh, successive generations. So these competitors, that is the outsiders, uh, often you know include uh, at, in 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 the modern parlance or in in contemporary period the national governments who sort of like with with different kinds of policies and programs seek to you know nationalize uh, natural forests forests for you know activities like setting up of uh, biodiversity parks or maybe national parks and so and so on which of course is in in, in con contravention uh, to the customary or traditional law of those inhabitants and secondly we have the forest commissioners uh, often with ties to the military or maybe national or local legislators. So thirdly we also have these agro-industrialists or other uh, commercial farmers who are in, 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 in you know constant sought for virgin lands for you know expansions for industrial purposes. And we also have the entrepreneurs who are seeking to appropriate high value uh, non-timber forest products. So. Uh, there, there is a situation of how some companies, you know, tends to uh, appropriate these uh, high value uh, non-timber forest products. So, these are a, a result of, you know, how the market based economy have penetrated uh, to the hinterland. And we also have these operators of, you know, mining concessions and in addition uh, infrastructure project competes to the land natural forests and so and so forth. So, uh, in, 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 in uh, what we sort of like tries to also you know have is uh, who are these uh, I mean the, the principal forest uses. So, given the kind of you know dichotomies which is normally uh, seen in the developed and developing countries, mostly in developing countries, uh, even till today forests happen to you know be used for uh, more importantly the Sweden cultivations uh, and also you know of course uh, the non-timber forest products and, and forest continues to be you know con uh, uh, converted to uh, permanent agriculture as we have already outlined. Now one of the main you know concern again here is that uh, the poor rural household are you know often uh, you know, being excluded from access to uh, timber wealth because of its high value, and then because they lack to you know uh, the power to compete for access to these high value uh, natural resources. And secondly, 
uh, timber extractions and, and, and uh, tree growing tend to be capital and uh, uh, skill intensive and also sometimes aim at uh, specialized consumer markets. So tree which are usually being grown for timber uh, actually requires a uh, land tenure and, and in which the poor uh, often do not have and, and uh, in, in terms of you know access to land. So it also in some sense represent a long term high risk investment whereas uh, the low income people need uh, a short term income and uh, avoid you know taking such risk. Now what then is uh, a non timber forest product? So of course there is a wide variety of uh, non timber forest products uh, that are used you know for multiple multipurpose use and it has been you know used for extractions of you know fuel uh, food medicine for its fiber and and which of course have you know valuable chemical components or that are used for you know social or religious purposes now the majority of these uh, non timber forest products are actually being consumed directly by uh, the collectors and their families and and some of course you know happens to be uh, the mainstay of their uh, household income and others are you know used infrequently but but, but then it is critically important as a source of food uh, other sources are when other sources are unavailable so it, it sort of like provides a sense of food security uh, for people i mean the, at, at the times of different kinds of you know uh, calamities or emergencies now looking at uh, some of the important study it, it has in some sense you know provided uh, potential or high uh, economic value of uh, tropical forest to the indigenous communities and, and the extraction of these uh, non-timber forest products by the local communities was widely proposed as a strategy to stem the rate of deforestation while uh, enhancing uh, livelihoods. So, uh, these forest resources as I had pointed out has been uh, an important part of uh, subsistence as well as uh, livelihood for these uh, forest dwellers and uh, uh, rural communities. Now this practice of extracting or extractiv extractivism in some sense is uh, a good practice for, for the simple reason that because it, it also in some way you know uh, preserves natural resources while enhancing income because it, it allows you know uh, a fellow time to regenerate uh, the uh, resources which have of course you know have been uh, the case almost uh, in, in, in this part of the you know areas. However, you know, following the process, I mean, the period of colonization and post colonization, the states, in some sense, you know, tries to restrict the use of these resources by the communities, mainly through the establishment of, for example, protected areas. And, and, and one of the main arguments being that uh, the human actions or activities uh, would, would destabilize the forest ecosystem by their unsustainable and destructive uh, use. This is one of the you know arguments which are you know being uh, uh, given. So as I had pointed out this uh, forest resources more importantly the NTFPs are, are, are actually the main sustenance of these uh, forest dwellers and livelihoods and conservation again are you know connected with the NTFPs. So therefore a new strategy that is participatory approach that is the participation of the uh, local communities in natural resource management uh, and uh, in, in, in terms of you know the property rights 
uh, the nature of power relations between the state and local institutions that is between the rich and the poor uh, resource user uh, have actually you know being uh, initiated. So, for example, the, the restrictions which I have you know uh, talked about uh, for instance in India the national forest policy was amended in 1988. Uh, which of course is followed by the establishment of the joint forest management in the 1990s in order to you know allow uh, a much more space for the local communities to engage in the natural resource uh, management and and more uh, recently that is in in response to the indigenous rights to you know uh, property and access to you know uh, forest resources the forest rights Act of 2006 was implemented by the Ministry of Envir Environment and Forest and uh, there is a lot remain to be seen to what extent uh, this act have uh, really you know uh, uh, serve the purpose of the you know target groups or the community concerned. As uh, we have already outlined, the NTFPs have uh, subsist subsist subs subsistence value that is uh, protecting communities uh, from extreme poverty along with the cultural values thus affirming the complex and uh, multiple use value which are you know associated with them. So, some recent studies also you know uh, looked at the potentialities of these non-timber forest products as something which should also meet the livelihood and conservation goals and indicate uh, challenges and by, by raising questions uh, to why despite uh, new uh, incentive oriented mechanisms there is a continued state of uh, degradations of forest and uh, increasing poverty. So, some uh, studies also in some sense suggest that the arguments that uh, the NTFPs can support rural livelihoods only if uh, some kind of alternative options are uh, available to them or uh, if market access and uh, basic infrastructures are in some sense missing. Now, uh, as, as we have you know uh, so far you know tried to uh, look into the case of uh, developing countries and now coming to uh, India the NTFPs are pretty much you know integral to the livelihood uh, as well as for you know the subsistence use by uh, the communities who are uh, you know inhabiting the forest and, and broadly you know being referred to as the forest dwelling communities. And uh, of course, it also serves as a significant, you know, uh, revenue uh, source of gener uh, revenue to the state government as well. And we also have medicinal plants such as which can con contribute uh, to the rural poor for their health and well-being, and uh, which of course is being used uh, to meet their requirements. That is their primary health care. Now. Uh, a study being done by uh, Choudhury in some sense uh, indicates that uh, the commercial value of the NTFPs in India is currently estimated in an average of you know uh, 11 billion dollars but uh, uh, NTFP trade distortion and uh, poor marketing mechanisms accounts for you know more than 70 percent average loss in returns to these communities. So, the social and cultural importance of uh, the NTFPs is often uh, not given enough attention to, uh, despite the uh, social and cultural significance of uh, those people who are dependent on these resources. For example, the traditional ecological knowledge and, and, and the usefulness of you know, combining it with uh, the scientific knowledge. Uh, in order to develop effective management plans uh, has been suggested by uh, some of those who have uh, made an extensive study on 
uh, regards to you know say the questions of you know conservation and sustainability. Now we can sort of like try to look into how poverty elevation and uh, forest conservation is interlinked. Now some of the works uh, which are you know being uh, carried out uh, sort of uh, give an emphasis on the intrinsic characteristic of forest and forestry and the real scope for reconciling the two objective is inevitably quite limited. So, in, in the course of you know the last uh, few decades, uh, rural incomes have on average increased in the uh, developing countries, yet natural forests have been uh, disappearing at a high rate. So, this is something which we sort of like needs to look into. So, while there have been you know some uh, positive outcome uh, with, with respect to you know uh, in, in, in the community and the social forestry, uh, in particularly in this issue, there have been also you know many failures and some of these solutions which are being provided have failed to bring any kind of issues. Now, we can sort of like try to you know look further or, or the interlinkages of uh, the different perspective uh, that is uh, how gender forest and livelihoods can be interlinked and, and, and this will be sort of explained uh, with the case of you know the some tribal communities uh, who are based in the northeastern region of India. Now, to begin with, uh, we can also, you know, say that the resources that is individuals or maybe households can have access to uh, depends not only on the local economy and uh, the ecology per se, but also uh, on the political economy of uh, resource sharing and distribution among various uh, groups of claimants. So, therefore, we could see that the elements of you know uh, social, political, and economic uh, institutions or uh, conditions, in some sense, uh, influence the way in which how people have uh, depended or are having access to these uh, resources. So, therefore, the way in which how uh, gender relations uh, are being uh, explained or, or, or how it is being deeply embedded in the economy and the politics of uh, control over resources uh, needs to be taken uh, into consideration. So, therefore, a dimension which is often neglected in the mainstream discussions on economic development and change. Well, further, you know, uh, the gender dimensions of livelihood actually goes uh, beyond the opportunities access and denied, which is in fact uh, linked to the gender division of work uh, within the family. So, typically what happens is that women share a greater portion of the domestic work and care and in turn conditions their effective choices in, in pursuing uh, other livelihoods choices that are you know often open to them. And then we can also look into the how the changes in land use and agricultural practices are in some sense uh, undermining the relevance of you know uh, women's access to resources or their knowledge system. So, uh, one pertinent way of looking at is the you know uh, way in which how ownership and control over this forest have uh, significant gender implications. Because uh, often forest products are you know being commercialized as I had already mentioned that the inroads of you know market economy have a deep impact on uh, these aspects. So, the way forest and forest related activities are you know being uh, viewed by the forest dependent populations also change considerably as a consequence of this. So, therefore, the shift from you know family and community labor to uh, for example, the wage labor for 
extraction of forest products, uh, particularly for the you know uh, market use, and as well as the interdependencies between you know farming and uh, forest related activities, in some sense alters the intra-family distribution of work, as well as opportunities for uh, both men and women. So therefore, the impact of uh, deforestations and uh, commercializations of forest products on, on, on women's work in some sense has been uh, you know burdened. So if we again try to locate the you know relationship between forest and livelihood uh, you know within the context of this Northeast India, uh, we could sort of like situate that uh, forest has always been you know a significant source of sustenance in uh, the region and, and, and the significance of the forest resources lies in the centrality of the forest based resources which act as an additional and dependable source of uh, livelihood particularly for smoothening consumption. So there are you know um, a lot of studies which are being you know conducted on the livelihoods and employment uh, diversifications process. So we could see that uh, the crucial di drivers of these the diversifications include the natural resource endowments and the uh, institutional structures defining and uh, differentiating the access and utilization of resources and also the connectivity and uh, infrastructural development in the locality, access to education and also the pattern of state interventions in the local economy. So livelihood uh, in, in, in the northeast regions are again uh, critically depend, dependent on the uh, environmental entitlement. So what is environmental entitlement? It, it refers to the uh, alternative sets of uh, utilities derived from the environmental goods and services or which the uh, social actors have uh, legitimate effective demand and uh, which are uh, instrumental in achieving well-being. So these environmental entitlements play a, a significant role in uh, different aspects of uh, livelihood security both at the you know household level namely economic security, food security, health security and empowerment particularly in the fragile ecological context. So therefore uh, forest plays a central role roles in the you know livelihoods uh, diversifications and uh, in the first one as uh, you know a uh, source uh, to mitigate risk and uh, smoothening consumptions as we have already pointed out during the seasonal shortfalls and uh, secondly in the as a source of you know consumables as well as uh, marketable products like uh, timber and range of you know non-timber forest products uh, which includes the medicinal plants. So this diversification which of course is mostly you know uh, uh, the first one is mostly uh, determined by uh, the survival needs of you know households uh, living in a you know high risk and uh, high diversity ecological setting and uh, uh, concentrates on the diversifications of livelihoods within and around agriculture so as i had you know uh, mentioned agriculture continues to be you know one of the main source of uh, livelihood for the majority of the people uh, in the region and uh, uh, the main features of uh, agriculture in the region include uh, low productivity and, and which of course in turn is again attributed to poor uh, irrigation facilities low mechanizations and limited uses of the high yielding variety seeds and, and also the predominance of uh, monocropping and uh, the practice of zooming or uh, sifting cultivations. So this consumption uh, expenditure 
uh, again uh, is is meant for you know their uh, survival and uh, which is relatively uh, for the you know poor household uh, is uh, being uh, based on this uh, community forest and and wh whereas the better of households operate more in the products of uh, you know uh, the high risk uh, resources like uh, timbers or which which are you know being marketed so therefore the consumptions of these uh, relatively poor households are uh, being dependent on this community forest or common forest uh, to extract fuel wood and bamboo or maybe the leafy vegetables whereas the consumption of timber was you know much higher among the rich household because it include uh, it, it, it sort of uh, need a lot of investment and uh, the poor household cannot really uh, afford or wanting to take a risk. So the commercial extraction of uh, timber and other forest resources again play an important role in transforming the uh, local economy and, and, and particularly in fastening the process of uh, monetizations of the exchange of uh, exchange process and commercializations of uh, production uh, relations even in the uh, case of relatively inaccessible areas of the state and and then exploitations of forest resource particularly uh, timber has uh, weakened the ethos of collective management so it has become more of uh, a privatized or individual activities. So in some sense we could say that commercialization or monetization of the exchange has changed the whole social fabric of the way in which how these uh, rural communities relate to their uh, resources. However, uh, the reason have uh, you know in, in, in recent years uh, witness a kind of uh, uh, phenomenal degrees of environmental degradation and, and, and deforestation has actually been growing at a fast pace owing to you know uh, gas cropping and uh, uh, resources being utilized uh, to serve the purpose of the market and also uh, because of you know different uh, development activities which are you know being pushed forward by the state. So apart from the environmental impact of, of deforestation which are you know induced by uh, the wanton exploitation of the uh, common forest for private gains, the institutional impact was that the traditional rules of resource use. So therefore, uh, forest plays a significant role in, in, in both the survival induced and accumulative uh, diversifications and, and, and laws of you know, access to uh, forest has uh, to some extent accelerated the process of proletarianization in certain contexts. Now, uh, this very term called uh, proletarianization uh, is, is nothing but uh, if, if you look at the Marxist interpretations, it is the social process uh, whereby people you know move from you know uh, being either an employer, unemployed or uh, self-employed to being employed as uh, wage labor by an employer. So therefore, proletarianization is often seen as the most uh, important form of uh, a downward social mobility. So people have you know actually lost uh, their uh, basic income or dependence on resources and uh, in, in some way we could see that uh, they are they have actually become uh, the ecological refugees because they are being denied uh, access to resources or, or, or maybe in terms of you know uh, because of the de depletions and degradations of those uh, resources they are you know being uh, left out and then without any choice. So one can also look at the gender aspects of how you know uh, the contributions of females more importantly in the collections of marketed forest products like 
timber, bamboo and medicinal plants uh, was, was of course negligible and, and women actually contributed more labor than men in, in, in terms of you know collections of firewood, grass, leafy vegetables, fruits and roots. And on the other hand in the collections of you know house building uh, materials men contribute more than that of women. So which of course is you know much more uh, it has much more weightage when it comes to when it comes to you know the market value. So if you look at the political economy of forest use and changes uh, the nature of uh, how forest has been you know observed to change significantly as a uh, uh, as, as market you know for the products develops and the gender implications of this change in forest use gets manifested in, in, in terms of you know uh, developing gender differences or, or the way in which how uh, people have you know uh, generated volumes of you know forest products and then the compositions of forest products which are being collected and the marketability of these products and, and as I said uh, the cash income earned through selling of such items in some sense determined which of you know the uh, contributions is given much more weightage of that of the men and women. So therefore gender implications uh, of changes generally you know the collective ownership of land under uh, jhum cultivations is uh, uh, gradually being replaced by the permanent cultivations and, and, and which of course has uh, an implication that is the individual property rights of a land and, and women tend to you know turn to uh, into disinherited pigeons. Further as, as we have witnessed the you know uh, degradations of forest and the very nature based economy gets uh, integrated to the larger uh, market economy the division, gender division of work uh, tends to be much more uh, evident and, and mostly uh, often resulting to you know the uh, burden uh, being uh, more on the women. So the commercial extraction of uh, forest product has meant that traditional subsistence activities such as uh, being uh, dependent on the NTFPs have been turned into you know income generating occupations. So commercialization has also meant uh, a more exposure uh, to outsiders mainly the uh, traders and dealers and, and, and this of course you know uh, demand to travel to you know marketplaces. So this has of course in some sense led to a situation where either the entire activity has been turned into a, a predominantly male activity or a division of labor has emerged where women and children are actively engaged in collecting the forest products and on the other hand the male members uh, take over the responsibility of selling the products. So therefore uh, in, in, in either of the cases the cash flow get concentrated in the male hands. So therefore one could see uh, the way in which how you know uh, the women have been you know uh, subjected to a sort of uh, exploitation and uh, one can from, from the Marxist perspective what could see that women are being doubly exploited. So there is that sense of you know uh, exploitations and alienations uh, on, on the part of you know the women uh, from their counterparts. So deforestation has also a negative implications on the women. Uh, for instance the process of privatization of uh, forest resources for rural women uh, particularly those belonging to the tribal communities are uh, pretty much high and uh, uh, substantial. So earlier studies uh, mostly you know the colonial anthropologists have noted that uh, 
women in the traditional community management systems had a greater degree of uh, participation in economic activities and then therefore they enjoy a greater you know space and freedom uh, that uh, women in compare with you know, the mainstream uh, Hindu caste uh, society. However, uh, it is also you know, uh, uh, you know unfortunate to see that the breakdown of this collective management of the natural resources under the mutually reinforcing impacts of uh, both the state and market forces as well as the uh, dominance of this elite uh, of institution structures of the collective control over uh, resources has uh, left women as uh, a group which are being impoverished. And although individual women belonging to richer sections might have benefited to some extent. So, uh, women actually have, you know, become uh, vulnerable and they are actually at the receiving end as a consequence of the breakdown of uh, the collective uh, management of natural resources. So, in some sense, one could also, you know, see the way in which how the antithesis or the way in which how the common property and the private property is in a, a state of conflict. So, as uh, the case in many uh, other forest uh, dependent societies, uh, women and uh, children in, in most of the, uh, you know, upland economies of uh, the region play an important role in the gathering uh, forest resources mainly for their con for domestic consumption as well as the commercial use. However, the declining uh, forest cover, particularly the uh, degradations of forests uh, closer to their settlements has uh, in some sense uh, brought a negative implications that is it meant an extra work or extra burden for many of them. So, for instance, if uh, environmental you know, conditions deteriorate, women uh, pay more in terms of the high risk and higher work burden, uh, both because of you know, the shrinking opportunities to work as well as the uh, longer working hours within and outside the home. So, therefore, women share a, a relatively higher burden in activities such as uh, collections of water, feeding domestic animals and uh, firewood and as well as the crop farming. So, uh, this forest dependent economies again get uh, integrated into the larger economies of uh, resource extraction and uh, commercial exploitation. So, the modes of resource use gets transform into a need based system to a commercial system. So, there is a dramatic transformations from a subsistence to a commercial or capitalist uh, mode of production. So, such a transformations often leading to uh, differentiations of uh, the peasantry does not leave the traditional institution uh, determining access to resource unchanged. So, such changes have uh, transforming, have been transforming the economies of the region in, in, in multiple ways. So, as uh, collective institutional structures are being uh, gradually disintegrated, uh, women as a group are, you know, facing uh, challenges on the diverse fronts and, and, and deforestations and uh, commercializations of forest products are actually undermining their use and ownership rights. So, on the one hand, uh, the kind of space which they share with their male counterparts has diminished and on the other hand, uh, their dependence on, you know, the f forest resources have, you know, declined as a result of, you know, uh, depletions of these uh, resources. 
So that is what we have discussed uh, so far uh, concerning to the forest livelihood and vis-a-vis -vis, uh, the cases of the uh, Northeast region. Now to wind up the model which we are dealing with that is natural resource management, I would like to you know come back uh, to what we have uh, started with that is uh, to re-evaluate and look at the you know communities based uh, conservations. Now community based conservation is uh, you know premise uh, within the idea that if uh, conservation and development uh, could be you know uh, simultaneously achieved then the interest of both could be served. So therefore it has been uh, controversial because uh, community development objectives are not necessarily con consistent with the uh, you know uh, conservation objectives in a given case. So therefore there is a conceptual shift that is towards a system view that is the inclusion of uh, humans in the ecosystem uh, which, which of course we have been at length discuss, discuss about uh, the joint forest management so on and so forth where the participation of the locals is utmost necessity and also toward the you know participatory approach to uh, ecosystem management that are of course interrelated and, and, and pertain to uh, an understanding of the ecosystem as a complex adaptive systems in, in which humans are you know considered to be uh, playing a very integral part. So it is at this point that humans should be you know included in the social ecological system. Now locating this from Tim Ingold's you know uh, perspective of uh, uh, dwelling or the dwelling perspective of uh, Ingold which, which is referred to the you know the practical engagement of uh, humans with others of the dwelt in ecosystem. So this practical engagement which is delineated by uh, Ingold is, is premise uh, within the discourse of you know building knowledge and uh, ecological relationship uh, and then it is the basis for you know putting uh, human back into the ecosystem. So therefore it involves the skills sensitivities and uh, orientations that have developed through long experience of conducting one's life in a particular environment. So therefore, the gender role and gender and livelihood vis-a-vis -vis forest resources can in some sense also you know being uh, uh, argued from this perspective uh, because uh, with the commercializations of forests and then with the inroads of you know markets uh, the positions or the space of you know uh, women are you know being squeezed and narrowed down and they are actually you know bearing the brunt of you know the uh, degradations of forests as we have uh, discussed. So therefore uh, basing on the premise of these dwelling perspectives one can actually see that uh, giving them a space to exercise their knowledge and experiences which they have earned uh, through the you know successive generations can in some way you know uh, liberate us from the uh, ecological crisis which we are into uh, at this point of time. So one can actually say that uh, to include women in the social and ecological system perhaps can in some way bring the solution. So in the case of this community based conservation uh, there has often been the, a mismatch between what the conservationists have thought uh, of as a community benefit example the sharing of uh, financial benefits from say ecotourism and, and what multiple uh, stakeholders in communities may have actually considered benefits. So community based conservation projects need to pay more attention to equity and empowerment uh, not necessarily you know favoring one and, and or, or, or not necessarily you know 
trying to demarcate or draw a boundary line between the rich and the poor or maybe the you know men and women so questions such as you know uh, what is the distributions of benefits of coal and cost and and how do different actors uh, relate to the resource in question and and also how do you know power relations at the local level derive from uh, differences of class ethnicity and uh, gender so if uh, equity and empowerment issues actually can be you know addressed livelihoods can uh, drive uh, conservation rather than simply being uh, uh, compatible with it so conservation has of late you know become uh, participatory participatory for two reasons first there has been the rise of you know stakeholders and uh, civil society in general throughout the world and and some would say that this is an inevitable development of the postmodern age like the globalization process which we are into now and second uh, participatory approaches have come to dominate uh, management uh, primarily because of the very nature of uh, complex environmental problems which require a different uh, participatory approach as as uh, ludwig puts it dates of management is over so uh, these are some of the readings and then perhaps uh, you can uh, enhance uh, your uh, understanding by you know referring to some of these works and uh, what we have discussed so far is trying to locate the interlinkages of you know how uh, livelihood can be situated uh, with, with reference to not just uh, forest alone but with the management of you know uh, or natural resources in in a much more you know uh, uh, and, and and in a much more sustainable manner so therefore the linkages of livelihood forest and conservation is something which we need to you know pay uh, attention and critically examine uh, from you know uh, different uh, geographical or different uh, uh, cultural context and, and, and try to you know come up with uh, uh, a kind of uh, solutions that would enable us to manage our uh, resources or the natural resources should be managed uh, sustainably. Thank you.